My name is Tessa Asquith Lamb and I'm an artist. I work at the City Art Centre and other venues, leading workshops and also running described tours for the visually impaired. In my video today, I'm going to be talking about the artist Edward Atkinson Hornell through five of his paintings. Hornell was born in 1864 and died in 1933. He was born in Australia to Scottish parents but lived most of his life in Kakubri. He trained at Edinburgh School of Art and also in Antwerp. During his lifetime he had several trips abroad which provided lots of material for his work as we'll see later on. The first painting we're going to look at today is called Harvesting Kakubri and was painted in 1885 while he was still quite a young man. It shows a rural scene of a woman in a bonnet digging up potatoes in an allotment or garden with a view to the town of Kakubri in the distance. It measures 41 centimetres high by 61 centimetres wide, about the size of a large rectangular cushion. It's painted in oil paint on canvas. When I look at this painting, I'm immediately drawn to the figure of the woman on the right hand side of the painting. She fills about two thirds of the composition on the right hand side with spaces above and below her. She's wearing very practical workaday clothes in dark colours, what looks like a bluish woolen top, a brownish um, kind of purpley skirt with a practical apron over the top, which is the kind of white cream colour. She's wearing what look like thick soled clogs or heavy boots, which are visible under her skirt. And she's also wearing a sunbonnet of a pinkish colour, which has got a stiff wire frame around it and a frill of cloth around the neck, which would have protected the back of her head from the sun when she was working in the garden or working in the fields. These kind of sunbonnets had a wire frame in them and were similar to the frames that go over carriages that flip up, up and down like a hood. Her face is shaded under the bonnet, but just visible. She's using a spade or hoe to dig up potatoes, which occupy the central space of the painting. And these are visible coming out of rich dark earth, which is also visible on the bottom right of the painting. She's digging them up and putting them into a basket, which occupies the centre front of the painting. Towards the left hand side of the painting are rows of vegetables growing in the allotment, what look like onions in rows and lots of cabbages, including some particularly really huge cabbages towards the centre left of the painting, which look like they need cutting quite soon. Behind the figure are golden orangey coloured trees and bushes, which suggest that this is autumn or harvest time. In the top left is another clue at the time of year that this painting is showing, in that there's a hayrick or haystack, which looks like a kind of golden muffin shaped thing on the, um, on the horizon line. Beyond this lady in her allotment is bluish kind of white um, tinged buildings, which is the town of Kakubri going into the distance and blue gray hills in the far distance and a, quite a cloudy sky. It's not an overcast day, it's still quite a sort of sunny, bright day and there's a sense of like golden light falling on her hands and on the apron and on parts of the, um, the garden where she's working. It's a very sort of tranquil workaday scene of everyday life. The next painting I'm going to describe is called Brighouse Bay, Wild and Burnet Roses. It was painted in 1929 by Edward Atkinson Hornell and measures 122 by 152 centimetres and it's about the dimensions of a small two-seater sofa. It's a landscape painting with figural elements in that it shows three young girls instantly recognisable as 1920s young girls by their bobbed hair and loose tresses sitting in a pyramidical kind of composition on sand dunes with roses around them. In the background of the painting is beautiful blue sea. This is Brighouse Bay near Kakubri, near where the artist lived and worked. If we divide the painting into four horizontal stripes like strata in rock, the top stripe 
the sort of top quarter, would be mostly sky. This is grey and white with patches of blue and represents the sky on a very changeable day when it's maybe sunny one moment and rainy the next. It gets slightly darker grey towards the right hand side. The next stripe down is mostly blue sea, wider on the left hand side, going towards a point of a triangle shape on the right hand side. It's not a completely calm sea and it's not too much of a stormy sea. This stripe also contains the head of the central figure in this trio of girls. Her head is higher than the, that of the other two girls and looks up towards the left hand side of the painting. She's seated on the sand dunes in a blue flowery dress and looks appealingly up towards the left hand side of the painting uh, through kind of pink roses that surround her head that are presumably growing out of the sand dunes. She's got her two arms stretching out in front of her, clasped down on the ground. To the left of her, also slightly intruding into the line of the sea, is a girl with dark, short hair, with rosy cheeks, who's looking up past the roses towards the right-hand side of the painting. She wears a white, frilled and tiered dress. Her left hand reaches up towards her mouth and face, while her right hand goes down to the ground, and she's in a curious kind of crouching posture on the sand dune. Also intruding into this second stripe down is the third girl on the right hand side. She has dark hair, rosy cheeks and a pink pattern dress. She seems to be uh, sort of leaning for support on the central figure. She's got her right hand on her upper arm and her left hand around the central figure's wrist. She has bare feet and bare lower legs. The third stripe down on the left hand side shows part of the beach. The sand is not a golden colour here, but a kind of whitish grey. The rest of that stripe contains the bodies and the dresses of the girls. The final stripe down the bottom of the paintings contains flowers, um, kind of like white discs of flowers and green leaves amongst patches of golden sand. These are the Burnett Roses of the title of the painting. Burnett Roses have white flowers and very sort of pretty little yellow middles and they are an alternative to the thistle as the national flower of Scotland. The pink roses that surround the girls' heads may be dog roses. These are quite sort of thorny roses and you wouldn't really want to get as close to them as the girls in this picture are. But it is a very idealised idea of, you know, of girls out in nature by the seaside enjoying all these wild flowers. The figures of the girls themselves are based on photographs Hornell took of local children. They would pose for him in his studio under the chaperonage of his sister and be paid for their time. He's very carefully observing their poses and their facial features in this picture to create his idealised and very beautiful idea of a day by the seaside. And paintings like this were tremendously popular. And he used Brig House Bay several times as a backdrop for his work. The next painting we're going to look at is called Three Japanese Peasants or Three Japanese Dancers. It was painted between 1921 and 1925 and measures 63 centimetres high by 76 centimetres wide. It was painted after Hornell returned from one of his trips to Japan. He'd previously visited in 1893-4 with his friend George Henry and went again in 1920-1921. While he was in Japan, he found an endless source of inspiration for his paintings for when he got back to Kakubri and bought lots of source material photographs. These were beautiful hand-tinted photographs that were known as Yokohama Shashin prints. These were tinted photographs which showed sort of geisha girls, blossom, very sort of stereotypical images that were produced for the Western market. He also bought Yukioi or Japanese woodblock prints while he was there, whose compositional style would also influence his later work. This painting shows three young girls dancing with Mount Fuji, a very recognisable shape, in the background. They wear very brightly coloured kimono and hold baskets or perhaps drums in front of them. Hornell arranged for photographs to be taken, or may have taken himself, the photographs which are the source material for this painting on his trip to Japan. 
in the source photographs, there are just two figures dancing and smiling, wearing these white caps. But he's put three figures together to make a better composition. A, a three, a sort of trinity of figures, really works well as a composition because you can have a central figure and two side figures which kind of complete that composition and lead your eye up to the mountain beyond. I'll describe the figures one by one. The young girl on the left, who's maybe about seven years old, wears a white cap and a multicoloured kimono. She holds in front of her a round basket and sort of stretches her arms out to the left-hand side. Her right knee is raised and pushing against the fabric of her dress, but she turns and looks towards the right-hand side of the image. The figure in the middle, who could be said to be the focal point, wears clothing which is mostly red and also has patches of white and other colours. She's doing a striding posture, sort of leading your eye across to the left of the painting. She has her left arm across her chest and her right arm raised, holding her basket or drum behind the head of the girl on the left hand side, so it looks almost like a halo. She too wears a white cap, has rosy cheeks and looks towards the left. The figure on the right hand side stands slightly back from the other two. She is using a posture which looks very much like the posture you'd get if you were carrying um, a seed tray and scattering seeds. She's holding her, uh, her drum or her basket in front of her on a ribbon round her neck like an usherette with a tray and she's got her right arm cast behind her. She too wears a white hat and a multicoloured clothing. The slopes of Mount Fuji look white and grey in the distance and are right in the centre of the image and there's a sense of blue sky and clouds and a hint of a landscape behind these figures. It's very much an idealised checklist of symbols of Japan. You've got the very brightly coloured Japanese clothing, the happy girls dancing and Mount Fuji in the distance. It's not really a realistic view of Japan, but it would have catered exactly to the fashionable ideas of people back um, in Scotland and the rest of the UK. It's the kind of image that would be very, very saleable. And he's really collecting information through his photographs that he can use back home to create images like this. The next painting I'm going to describe is called Three Japanese Women in an Interior and was painted between 1921 and 1925 after Honel returned from Japan. It is an unfinished work measuring 63 by 63 centimetres wide and is oil on canvas. It is unframed. Most of the other paintings we've described will have had very elaborate gilt frames common for their time, but this is an unframed piece. 63 centimetres is about the width of a dishwasher or maybe a washing machine and it's a square format painting. What's interesting about this is it's an unfinished painting and shows the mechanics of working out what works in a composition. The artist has sketched two vertical lines down the left and right hand side a few centimetres in. These perhaps suggest that he meant to crop down the composition from a square to a more vertical rectangular shape. This is interesting because it would have changed the whole feel of the composition. I'll try and describe what's happening in the picture. The three women are making a gesture of greeting and they're crouched down wearing kimono with elaborate um, pinned up hairstyles and their hands are held together in front of them on the floor. There are two women in the foreground. The woman on the left hand side can be seen in full body and she's wearing a very elaborate patterned kimono and her hands are in front of her and she's in profile. Facing her on the right hand side is a very similarly, de similarly um, posed woman, uh, but we can only see very much sort of part of this woman. She's cropped off on the right hand side. And if indeed he did intend to crop his painting down further, we would have only really kept her forearms and head. Behind these two women, is a red tray which has already been painted in in a very intense colour and there is a suggestion of some objects on the tray. Behind the tray and to the centre right of the painting is a woman whose face we can see fully but she has downcast eyes. She's wearing a blue kimono and is making the same gesture hands together on the floor in front of her. Behind the three women is a view out of a screened room which can be seen um, at the sides to a beautiful sort of pond or lake. 
the sides of which on the right hand side is a sort of slight suggestion of a tree and on the left hand side the very distinctive crooked shape of a cherry tree with its little dabs of pink paint suggesting blossom. The arch of the pond goes around from the sort of right hand side and curves around towards the left and then in the distance are what might be hills or perhaps more trees. On the buff background the artist has sketched in these things and is starting to put in the colours. The two figures in the front that face each other are taken very directly from a photographic print which Harnell bought on one of his trips to Japan. They have two women in the photograph face each other and it's a Yokohama shashin print made for the Western market. It shows a kind of stereotypical image of women in an interior. These, these uh, photographs were very, very important to Hornell in his later work, and they provided a really important source of reference. And this particular photograph has got pin marks and splashes of paint on it, suggesting that it had been an active part of his studio, and he's really using it as a reference point. I find it so interesting that he's chosen to add that third figure because as an artist if you've just got two figures kind of pointing at each other in a room it doesn't feel quite as balanced as having that third figure come in and, and create this kind of pyramid composition of figures that he seems to really like in his work. Although unfinished it gives us a glimpse into his working methods which I think is really interesting and again this is an image of stereotypical Japanese um, everyday kind of scenes which would really really um, appeal to the western market and these are the kinds of paintings that he th knew would really sell very well. It's pretty women in an interior wearing beautiful clothes and there's even the, the sort of suggestion of cherry blossom in the distance so this is a real kind of tick box of all again of all those things which would have um, made it an appealing um, painting for the western market. This painting is titled In the Orchard and was painted by Edward Atkinson Hornell in 1898. It measures 116 centimetres high by 102 centimetres wide. This is about the height of a tall high back dining chair by about a metre wide. So it's quite a big painting. It shows a group of seven girls in an apple orchard picking red apples surrounded by huge round kind of almost uh, water lily shaped leaves. The overall kind of colours of this painting are reds and golds and greens and it feels like the vibrancy you'd see in a, like an amazing fruit salad of a painting. Starting from the bottom of the painting, the kind of focal point for me of this picture is a young girl who's slightly larger than the other girls in this painting, of which I can count seven. She's looking out towards the viewer and she's holding up towards her face a red apple. She wears a pale coloured um, kind of pinafore or dress and looks to have on a golden coloured hat. To her left is another girl wearing blue who looks towards her. To the left and right of this central pair are two further girls. On the left hand side, a blonde haired girl has her back towards us. We can see a red ribbon in her hair and she wears a pink pinafore over a greenish or bluish dress. She's wearing a pinafore to protect her dress, which is common in the 19th century. A pinafore is a kind of apron with a back in it. To the right of these figures, on the far right, is a girl in a red dress who holds in her outstretched hand a really luscious looking red apple and she has dark hair and red lips. These girls, they occupy the, the kind of whole bottom half of this painting and they're surrounded by these enormous leaves which tower above them like parasols or umbrellas. These are probably a plant called butterbur that has very large round leaves that were once used to wrap butter a long time ago. The top half of the painting contains three more girls. There are two girls with blonde hair in the sort of central part of the top of the picture and they both have their arms raised up picking apples. They wear red and white dresses. There is one further girl to the centre right who looks out towards us wearing a big blue ha um, hair bow or maybe a blue hat. Behind them are two apple trees with kind of contorted branches, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the right goes right up against the edge of the painting and is partially cut off. 
Behind these trees are glimpses of the sky and white clouds. And to the left of the painting, top left, are terracotta roofs of distant buildings and part of the kind of edge of a kind of blue pond or like a little sort of stream in the distance. The whole surface of this painting is covered in thick impasto paint and yet we can still make out the details of the girls faces and their hands really clearly. There's a great skill in this in using very loose brush strokes and yet where it matters still having that detail it's a really fine balance. The overall patterning and the real amazing richness of colour in this is very reminiscent of Hornell's friend George Henry who also used these very intense colours. It has a kind of flattened perspective to it, by which I mean areas in the background and areas in the foreground are treated in a similar way. The intense colours show the influence of Japanese art, which was such a part of Hornell's work. <laughs>